dear students. So, uh, in our discussions on fundamentals of atmospheric physics, we have seen how the pressure variation occurs with, the, with respect to height and how density varies with respect to height, right. So, in today's class, uh, we will try to, we will try to use some aspects of pressure and density variations and we will also try to use some aspects of forces, uh, surface forces and body forces that we have learnt to, uh, to derive uh, the, the very useful or very fundamental equation which is the hydrostatic equation. So, we will try to derive the mathematical uh, derivation of the hydrostatic equation which looks something like this dp over dz is minus rho g. Okay. We will try to derive this and then we will try to see what are the consequences of this equation. In subsequent classes, we will also try to see what is the hypsometric equation and uh, what does it uh, convey about uh, at the about the atmosphere. So we'll have to we'll we'll try to use this many number of times in our discussions. So this is a this is the most fundamental uh, equation in the atmospheric science. So we, we also we, we many times we say that the atmosphere is hydrost is in hydrostatic balance. We will try to see what does it mean, right? So let's say. So, we have seen that let us say we say that uh, the pressure varies with respect to height like this P0 exponential minus h by h. What does this mean? This means that pressure at any given height, so P0 can be taken as the pressure at let us say sea level, okay, the standard pressure 1000 millibar, right. So, pressure at any height P will depend on P0, the initial value. And it, it means that P will be proportional to uh, the initial pressure and P will decrease with respect to height. Let us say P will be inversely proportional to the height. So, if you put up all these things, you will realize that dP over P, the rate at which the ch pressure changes with respect to the surface pressure will be exponential with respect to height. So, what is capital H is the scale height we have already derived, we have already discussed all this aspect. So, scale height is let us say scale height is kt by mg. So, what does scale height tell you? Scale height tells you that by what distance uh, you have to travel so that in the vertically up in the atmosphere so that the pressure at, a, at that particular height is 1 by eth of the original value that you have started with, right. So, th there is a fundamental definition of the scale height in the, in the perspective of pressure. If you want to convert it for density, the density has to decay exponentially to 1 by eth of its original value after traveling a particular distance and this distance is going to be called as the scale height, right. Most importantly, if you consider the surface of the earth, let us say to be like this, what do you realize? You realize that if you, if you go up, the pressure will decrease. So, now in this direction height is increasing, pressure is decreasing. That means we can imagine that uh, there is a low pressure, there is a high pressure here and there is a low pressure here, right. Now, from our discussions on various different types of forces and the types of forces which are relevant for atmospheric science, we have seen that there is a force which is called as the pressure gradient force. We have seen that the magnitude of this pressure gradient force will depend on not on the pressure, but depend on the gradient of the pressure. So, force will be proportional to the gradient of the pressure. So, there is a difference in the pressures from here to here, right. So, the direction of the force and there is also a minus, right. So, what, what this pressure gradient force tells you is that pressure gradient force will be proportional to the difference of pressure between these two points. Let us say we call this as point 1 and this point. The difference of pressures, the force magnitude will depend on the difference or the magnitude of difference between these two points in terms of pressure and it will act in the opposite direction. So, naturally, if you imagine an air parcel here at this point, the natural movement of this air parcel is to go towards the low pressure, right. But the force is in this direction, the movement is in this direction, right. So, that means that pressure gradient force will, if the pressure gradient force alone is acting is existing in this picture. So, this is the earth, right. For reference, this is the earth. So, if the pressure gradient force is alone is existing in this picture, it would make this air parcel at high pressure to go towards the low pressure. That means, the entire atmosphere should just escape away from the earth, but it does not happen like that. What happens in reality is that this air parcel that you are trying to push away to the low pressure 
by the pressure gradient force is is again pulled by the gravitational pull. So, the PGF is what trying to take the air parcel away into the low pressures. The gravity is, re, is the restoring force which is trying to bring this air parcel towards the ground. So, this balance of pressure gradient force and the gravity. So, the balance of pressure gradient force and gravity is generally called as the is the hydrostatic balance, hydrostatic balance or the equilibrium that results when you strike this balance is, is called as the hydrostatic equilibrium. So, we assume that the atmosphere in general conditions is always hydrostatic in nature. So, that means at any given height, you imagine any height, at any given height, the pressure gradient force is always balanced by the gravitational pull. One more very important thing is pressure gradient force is proportional to the magnitude of pressure difference. So, pressure gradient force will be uh, towards the low pressure. The movement of the air parcel sh should be towards the uh, low pressure. So, the, hydro the equilibrium that results from the hydrostatic balance is the hydrostatic equilibrium. Right. Now, let us try to derive an expression for this uh, hydrostatic uh, equilibrium, how the equation looks like. I mean, why should we have this uh, in a differential form? Let us say, let us consider, let us say, Let us say this is the column of uh, atmosphere that we have taken for reference. Okay. So, let us consider a slab of very small thickness here like this in this column of atmosphere. Let us consider this slab. Just to be able to identify this slab, we shade it. Okay. Now, let us say uh, the slab is so the what this is x this is y and this is z let us consider the slab the such that dx dy is equal to 1 so this is the z direction that is going up so we take this dim this point to be at z and the point the topmost point of the slab to be z plus dz naturally the pressure at the lower surface is p naught and the pressure at the upper surface is p naught plus dp but here the dp is negative why the pressure is decreasing with respect to the height right so there is a force that is because of the atmosphere that is existing below the slab and there is a force by the atmosphere that is existing above the slab on the top surface so there is a force from the bottom which is trying to push the slab and there is a force from the top which is trying to push the slab towards the ground. Now, we can conveniently say that the, po the force that is, uh, that is marked as 1 is the pressure gradient force which is trying to push the slab towards the lower pressures and the force 2 marked with 2 is the gravity, gravity which is trying to pull the slab, pull the slab towards, the, towards the ground. Right. So, we know that uh, pressure P is p naught exponential minus h by h right now we take the area to be unit a d a is equals to 1 so slab is defined from z to z plus delta z or dz so the mass will now become mass is density times the volume which is equals to rho times delta x delta y delta z right so mass area being 1 mass now becomes rho times delta z right so the force acting on the mass acting on this mass due to the gravitational pull is f is simply mg 
which is equals to rho g delta z. What is the direction of this force? This force is acting downwards. Now, let us consider the vertical force due to the pressure, the other force, right. So, it is acting from z to z plus delta z and from a pressure p to p plus delta p. But it, the only difference is that it is exactly op acting in the opposite direction. So, this is let us say this is force number 1 and this is force number in that case, so we can just balance these two forces, the force due to the pressure gradient and the force due to the gravitational pull. So, the pressure gradient force we have written is the force per unit mass is, we have already derived this expression 1 by rho, rho times del P. So, here P rho is the density, rho is the density, P is the pressure. Force per unit mass is proportional to the gradient in the density, gradient in the uh, pressure, which implies force is simply proportional to del P or you can write the force as minus 1 by rho in one dimension d P over d z times the mass is rho times delta x, delta y, delta z. So, force is now minus 1 by rho d p over d z times rho times delta x delta y delta z. We can also write this delta x delta y delta z as d x d y d z. d x d y d z. So, we can cancel this and this. So, we will write d is equals to minus d p because del d x d y being 1, right. So, force is now just the change of pressure between the surface the 1 and 2 the slab the bottom side of the slab to the top side of the slab. So, for the equilibrium for equilibrium to exist, we expect the forces 1 to be equal to force 2, right. That is, we are trying to say that F g is F p g f. So, you can use the earlier expression minus d p is the is the pressure gradient force which is equal to g rho d z. So, this is the pressure gradient force and this is the gravity this is the gravity, we have used this here minus g rho d z. So, with this we can rearrange d p over d z is minus f g, right. So, this is called as the hydrostatic equation and or hydrostatic equilibrium. So, we can see that we can use the kinetic gas equation, we can rearrange this equation to so if you if you use density in terms of pressure, you can realize that you will get a d p over p term, which if you integrate will result in the form of p is equal to p 0 exponential minus h by h. So, these two are the same. So, the rate at which the pressure changes with respect to height is equal to simply the product of density times the gravitational pull. Now, let us say let us we use alpha as V by m or 1 by rho. So, we know that P in terms of P V T we can write P is equals to rho R T or alpha is equals to 1 by so, where rho is the density, rho is the density and alpha is called as the specific volume, right. So, you can write minus d p is equal to g rho d z or g d z 
is equals to minus d p over rho which is equals to minus alpha d p using this. Integrating this equation now between the pressures p 0 to p at infinity. We are trying to imply trying to see the consequences of the hydrostatic equation over d p is equals to z these two on the same limits z to infinity g rho d z. So, we can say that the pressure at infinity is 0 right. So, and pressure at let us say at 0 let us say 0 is p 0 at z is equal to 0. So, we will write the integral as p minus infinity minus p of z is equal to integral z to infinity g rho dz. That implies pressure at a height z is 0 to z 0 to infinity g rho dz. So, we have taken the hydrostatic balance here, we have taken the hydrostatic balance. We have in rearranged this term so that we get a derivative of p in terms of the density. Then we integrated this term to be able to see that the pressure at any given height z under hydrostatic equilibrium is equal to integral of 0 to infinity at that so this this should this should actually be z because integral of uh, z to infinity g times rho dz. Now, rho dz is the mass we have also we have already seen that. So, we can see write that p of z is simply integral z to infinity g m. What does this mean? This means that pressure at any given height h or z in this particular case is, is essentially the weight of atmosphere that is existing above that particular point. So, pressure at any given height is the weight of atmosphere that exists above that particular point. If you take it to the big to if you take this point to be the surface, it is the surface pressure. At any other point, it is just the total weight of the atmosphere that is existing above it. Right. So, this is something about the hydrostatic balance. The hydrostatic balance is the equilibrium condition between uh, the pressure gradient force and the gravitational pull. As long as these two are equal, the there are no horizon, there is no there is there is no vertical movement in the atmosphere. As long as these two are striking a balance, and this balance is called as the hydrostatic balance. And the hydrostatic equation is the most fundamental equation in the atmospheric science. dP over dz is minus rho g, right? And the most important consequence of this equation is that you write p is equal to p naught exponential minus h by h, or you write that pressure at any height z is equal to integral z to infinity g m. So, pressure at any given height h is the total weight of atmosphere that is existing above that particular height. Right. So, we can stop here. In the next class, we will we'll try to see what is the hypsometric equation and how hypsometric equation will, will allow us to calculate the difference of height between any two given pressure surfaces.